Hello, I'm Brian Bernard. Welcome to the SAP Sample Spotlight. In these short segments, we look at some of the most interesting and useful projects in the SAP Samples organization on github.com. Today, we're joined by developer advocate DJ Adams, as always, and Tobias Sorn, a UI5 developer from the UI5 Foundation team. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. I'm really excited to have Tobias on with us. Um, this is a super interesting looking repo. Um, let me just scroll down for a second. Uh, clearly, this is part of uh, the Open UI 5 initiative. And I was immediately drawn to this because of the phrase service worker, which you know I know a tiny little bit about. I'm hoping that you're going to tell us a bit more about that. But when I think of service workers, I think of PWAs, progressive web apps, and this whole idea of like a, a little sort of a mini back end in your front end. So is that is that a good way to think about service workers? And you know, why is this relevant to UI5 developers, Tobias? Hi, first off, uh, thanks for having me. And yes, uh, that's indeed how can, you can think of it. So the service worker API inside the sample is exactly used for this purpose. It's used for caching and using the latest web technology features such as the as you already said, the service worker in the and the indexed API mm -hmm. and shows how you can integrate it into your UI5 application. So basically, um, this is a, well, more than a proof of concept. Obviously, I can see the disclaimer here, you know, folks in the, in the community, developers, you've got to figure out how you want the service worker to work for your own productive applications. But this, this looks to me like a really nice example of how you might utilize the, the power of a or the facilities of a service worker in a, a UI5 based uh, web application, right? Exactly. So um, it's UI5 specific. So you can, um, can configure it, of course, the way you want to have it. And basically, it can work with UI5 apps, which are configured such that the framework is, for example, loaded from the content delivery network, and mm -hmm. the application resources are served on a specific um, web page, and it right. can be uh, configured for this specifically. Okay, so so what I'm what I'm sort of understanding here, and I, clearly as well, it's sort of uh, described and sort of shown here. We've got we've got some you know usual suspect files and directories here but there's a couple of directories open ui5 sample app and that's a name i recognize and also ui5 service worker and i think further down here we'll go back to the download and install in a second further down here i think you talk about the content structure right so we can you just explain what the what the developers getting in this in this repo exactly so the first item is the open ui5 sample app so it's um that's the one we all of, know and love, right? Yeah. Exactly. That's the one being used out there as a starting point for all of the uh, the applications being created. And it's slightly modified such that it uses um, the service worker, which you can find under this UI5 service worker folder. And, okay. And this one contains basically the source code for a service worker, which is UI5 specific, but also contains other um, I say caching strategies. So, so one of the one of the features that I'm aware of, at least in my very small amount of knowledge about serv the service worker API and what they're used for, you know, caching caching of of uh, resources of assets, especially you know if the if an app goes offline, that's that's one of the key benefits of coupling your front end app with a service worker. Is that is that uh, the right way to think about this sort of thing? Exactly. So it basically um, checks first. So when the service worker, it runs in the background. And for the very first request, it checks, OK, is there a newer version on the server? Mm -hmm. If so, it loads it into the cache and uses it. But otherwise, it uses, um, that's, main, uh, that's most of the time, it's using the cache without actually requesting the server any further. And also with that, is able to provide an offline scenario. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so um, in fact, just before we dive into the the service worker directory, because I think a lot of folks will be already familiar with the the sample app. That's that. By the way, if you're not familiar, 
that's the, the lovely to do app here, uh, which has been around for a while. Uh, and this little sort of animated GIF shows, I think, the service worker in action here helping out. But I just wanted to point out that, that I've done this. You know, I've, I've cloned the repo, done the npm install, you know, the standard sort of um, incantation, npm start, and navigated to the uh, to the local server, and everything worked beautifully, right? So that's maybe maybe that's the first thing that you know you sh one should do when when looking at this repo, just download it and start it running and have a start poking around. Is that is that what you'd recommend? Exactly. So the, um, you wanted to have it really easy to consume. So you just clone it, install it, install it and start it just like every other, uh, basically, a modern repository you go to. And then you can figure it out for yourself. So the best way to see how something is working, actually, to get your hand at it. Yeah, so that's the idea. Totally agree. Totally agree. And in fact, let's so let's just jump into the UI5 service worker directory, um, just to have a feel for what's in there, right? Maybe maybe you could just give us a quick overview while we're looking at this, you know, what's in this service worker directory and how things how things generally work. Let me make that a little bit smaller so we can see it. There we go. Exactly. So this service worker implementation provides various uh, caching strategies. So first off, the service worker is um, intercepts every request. So which you can see on the top left. Mm -hmm. And um, with the first um, request, it actually gathers the version information. So this is UI5 specific. So for the application, it's the, the application version is inside the manifest. Yep. And the framework version is inside a file called subui version JSON. And this one, it fetches first and then checks, OK, do I have a cache hit or cache miss? And with the cache miss, I'll uh, fill the cache and get uh, further cache hits. And then uh, you actually save further requests to the server. Gotcha, gotcha. I mean, this is a, such a powerful concept. Um, I definitely think it's worth you know, folks like uh, me and other developers looking more into the service worker API. As far as I understand it as well, what's important to know is that, well, first of all, everything is asynchronous, right? So you, you really got to embrace the whole asynchronous nature of, um, you know, web-based application uh, development. But also, maybe maybe more interestingly, is it is it that the service worker itself, it that that is completely or more or less independent of what's on the glass. It doesn't have access to the DOM. It's not really, you know, it, it really is like a mini back end. Exactly. So the service worker is, uh, like you say, like a mini back end, like a proxy which intercepts the requests and which can also store these responses. So that's um, the baseline for the offline scenario. So you don't have to query the server anymore. You can just uh, work on the resource which you have inside your cache. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So just one more thing before we uh, before we wrap up. I did notice that not only um, do we have this sort of pairwise set of uh, directories here that sort of work together, the, the actual front end app and the service worker, but you've given a presentation at UI5Con, right? So that you've, you've linked to the resources for that presentation here. Exactly, so this was a long time um demonstrated um, one thing or one question which I got as a, as a feedback, okay, when can it actually be consumed? And I can proudly say that now it's the time that it can be consumed. It Fantastic. can be uh, integrated into your own application. Superb. So Tobias, um, just before we wrap up, is there anything else you want to point us to here in the repo or should just people just go and clone it and uh, you know start hacking? Exactly. So, um, of course, uh, start hacking and provide feedback, provide pull requests. Good point. Exactly. And uh, one thing uh, which uh, needs to be mentioned, so, of course, the service worker API can only work on asynchronous requests. So, if there are any synchronous requests triggered, they won't be intercepted. Gotcha. Perfect. So, Tobias, that's that's it from me. Thank you so much for joining Brian and me here. Um, yeah, and folks... Go to uh, the SAP samples and uh, check this out. Thanks for having me. Yes, do that. Thanks, uh, Tobias, for the excellent work and DJ for the tour. See you next time. See you, folks. Okay, bye.